Greetings, everyone. Um, it's I'm back and I'm working on the VSS uh, engine thruster. And I am just I wasn't planning to go live tonight, but I was just in the mood to do something. And I was just uh, browsing around the, the CAD file. And I was thinking, well, you know, I'm having fun with this. Maybe other people will like it. So um, I thought I'll go ahead and go live. Not only that, but uh, time permitting, um, I'll try to also show how easy it is to take uh, a 3D object done in the CAD program, such as SolidWorks, and take that and laser cut the item. And um, it's a simple process. There are, there are several steps involved, but it's quite simple and straightforward. And uh, you know, most of the work is taken uh, through SolidWorks to do. So in other words, it makes it easy. And um, so with that, I will just uh, get started and continue. I was uh, working on this thruster piece, and um, there's a few items with it that, um, well, let me show you how it is here. These items here, they're, they stick out a little bit too much, so I'm just going to go ahead and trim them down. But instead of just changing the uh, how far they stick up, I'm just going to go ahead and just carve an area out. The reason why I'm doing it like this is because if I want to go back later and carve another shape, all I would have to do is just carve the shape in in this area and then just duplicate that all around. It, it, it'll be very simple, very easy. So I just have a few items I just want to change with this. I don't have a whole lot of ideas of what I'm going to do with this um, thruster piece. So I'm working on it a, a little at a time. So uh, let's see, I'm just going to increase the size, uh, the number of items. Okay. This and extruded cut. And uh, how far do I want it to go? I want it to go to the next surface, this surface. Okay, so it's trimmed a bit. And it's because when I, when I brought the, uh, watch, I'll show. Let me bring it up. Open. Mm, let's take a look at it right here. Actually, let's take a look at it right there. So we can take a look. The bottom part, okay, one of these items is impacting or touching the floor. So I got several ideas I want to do with it. One of the ideas is um, I want the, the engine parts to be raised off of the, the floor a little bit. see what I the the old idea is that uh, this wall part when I insert it into the floor it's going to get really close to to these items so that was the reason why when I went ahead and just trimmed it off a little bit now I just want to do one more little thing and then I'll stop there and then i'll go to this area and i have a couple of ideas i want to do here just to dress it up a little bit and then i'll stop that and then i'll move on to something else um probably the the laser cutting demonstration um oh what i need to do also i need to get the the comment section showing just in case i get some comments So, okay, I've got this kind of underneath the, the other window. Yeah, you can ignore these errors right now. 
So anyways, um, I'll close this. You want to save it? Nah, don't don't save. Okay, uh, so what I want to do here is um, I'll work with the top. Okay, I work with this front part here. Sketch. Let's make a, a line. I'm just going to cut it right here. So it's about six millimeters. I'm going to make this into a construction line. And let's see. I'm just throwing a shape there for now. Okay. Not a fancy shape. Make it bi-directional. I'm going to put some end caps on it, or cap ends. Yeah. And right now it's just 20 millimeters. Let's, let's, let's see if I make it 15, how does that look? Okay, good enough for now. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and... Copy this actually. So let me go ahead and select this. Copy this. Make a, in a, an array because what I want to do is go all around. I want to make a circular array. Let's change the view for it to be straight on and just increase the number of items. Okay. I'll click that. Could make it straight just out of curiosity if i say features extruded and i say something like up to the vertex and i choose this vertex will it make it rounded no so i would have to go back in and, and round it up you know so um Okay, let's just make it there. I'm, I'm I'm thinking of something else at the moment too. So let's let's accept this. Let's save that. And I'm wondering. I choose this plane here. Change my view. And I try something like. Like cutting this, basically making this part like a, a slope. And I could just cut it like that there, but let me see if I do a revolve cut. Uh, I need to choose where it's going to revolve around. So I need to put a center line right here to the origin. Make sure it's 180 straight select the items features sketch not sketch sorry features go to revolve cut okay it's going to the revolve cut but actually i should make it thicker so we go back to sketch So I have to move this part. Let just make it uh, five millimeters more. Here, I'm going to delete this line. Okay, now I go back and I say features, revolve cut. Okay, now I got all the items i'll say go and see what we got eh. well i could 
make these other items kind of rounded here. But I think I'm going to leave this part for another structure. I'm not going to do that today. I got to think about it some more. But um, I kind of like how it's how it is. But you know, the thing is, is that this is curved. And this is straight. And so I don't want to make this part. I don't want to make this straight. I mean, I don't want to make that curve. Because then it's going to slope down, you know, it's going to slope down to there. So I want to keep this straight. So I'm going to end up putting uh, other items here, other objects. So I'll, I'll leave that for later. So this is just adding a couple more items today. And I'll work with this later. So I think that's all I want to do right now. Because I don't have a, a complete idea how this is going to look. I'm just kind of winging it as I go. Now I'm going to take uh, open. That cylinder part. Why? I don't want that. But I'll open it. Oh, I want, okay, I want that. So this part here is going to fit into that other part. It's going to fit into this part right in, in, in this space. So do I have, yeah. So this is how it's going to look so far. So this is the part I'm going to work on right now. Mm, let's take a look and see. Let's put it on there. I don't know. I'm just going to delete it right now. It kind of bugs me to see uh, an error. I'll, I'll figure out what was going on on that later. Save that for now. Um, so what I want to do here is see how far this cylinder goes into this other part. So one easy way to do is just to kind of peel it back like that. Just like that. So then I'm going to change the view. So just the, really, I need to make this. Oh, oh. Oh. Come on, you obey me. <laughs> ah, control Z. I don't know what's going on. Ah, I told a distance. Okay, so let's see. Um, hmm? Well, one thing I can do is uh, I can suppress it so it'll still be there, but not restricting me right now. So I'll move this back. So so what's this distance? Does this look good? Well, good enough for now. Let's um let me 
let me see uh, one easy way to do the distance thing. Well, it's this. Uh, I think it's an insert. No, it's on the tools. Ah, oh, sorry, wrong thing. That's equations. Tools, evaluate, measure. So then I select, let's say, from that edge to this edge. And let's take a look. See. What is the item? I guess the blue one. So 125.51 millimeters. So let's just say 125, and I'll keep it, keep it like that. 125 millimeters. So, um, let's go back. Yeah, it looks a little bit shorter. Huh? I guess I could always print it longer. Rebuild and save. Now I'm going to switch to the cylinder. All I want to do is just make some decorative uh, pieces. I don't, in other words, not to make it just a cylinder, but to add a little bit of visual interest. So let's say, um, so go to here. Uh, choose that surface there. Actually, uh, I want to go to something like this. So sketch, sketch, let's do a construction line. So we'll start here, to, and we just want to do 125. Okay. Now I'm just going to leave that there so I have a, a little reference. Now I am going to go to the outer area. Along the circumference area. And I'm just going to make myself a line right here. 90 degrees. Okay. And so right here, I'm just going to um, just add something. Let's say um, I don't want this to be a construction line. So let's say something like this. Uh, Five millimeters? No, let's try. Let's just try two. Two millimeters. Uh, and this. Basically, just I'm thinking just like just to make a bump of some sort. Let's just say five. Let's just say four millimeters deep. Back down to here. Let's go a little bit under. Well, yeah. Yeah, let's go a little bit under, let's just say one millimeter into the, the structure, come back, and this be, this will become a ring, mm, so, okay, I need to make another um, center line, I'll just go in this direction here, it doesn't matter what direction I go. So select this, select that, features, revolve, boss, base. Just, it's, uh, uh, it's, it's just, uh, anyway, choose the axis of rotation or revolution. I don't know, sometimes I just make up words. Uh, select that. Let's go ahead and save. Ah, let's see. Let's try. Oh, not here. Oh yeah, let's let's, let's take a look. Oh, no, let's... So it should be this. Okay, there it goes. So it should be there. So anyway, um, let's go to here. What I want to do is I want to get the length. 
of that. Because what I want to, what I want to know here, sketch, center line. I want to know. So it's fifty millimeters long. Cancel. Okay, fifty millimeters long. I'm going to put it right here. Sketch. Let's get a center line going. Just so it'll be easier for me to to do things right at the edge of this curved surface. And actually, let's make another uh, curved surface right here. Okay. And let's see. Let's do. Right up there, let's say 25. Or 25. And sweet. So let's make this into a solid line. Let's uh, go ahead and mirror this. Let's trim the circle out of the way. Now, I'm not quite happy with it. I'm thinking maybe instead of straight, I could just make it into a curve. Might actually look better as a curve. Okay, so let's try that. I'm going to go ahead and make this into a construction line. So that way, it's still there if, if I ever need to make it solid again. Mm. Let's just go back and do the circle. didn't catch circle right there uh, let's do this come on catch go from here over here I don't want it here that's good. Um, then let's take this and let's mirror this. Oh, not there. Let's take this line and let's mirror so that way I don't have to make the line again. The nice thing about mirror is that if I change that line, the other line automatically changes also. So as long as I told the mirror to mirror along this construction line, so as, as long as I don't destroy this construction line, whatever I do here is going to do is going to change there. So now I'm just going to trim these lines. And trim that. Trim the circle. Okay, this is a little bit more of what I was thinking. So, select. Now, what I want to do is select this, but I don't want to get the construction lines because what I want to do is make an array, a circular array. I, I call it circular array. But uh, it's 
It's a circular sketch pattern. It's an array of, of, of items, you know, an array of lines, but um, or an array of sketches, but it's an array. So it's just that it's it's a, an array rotating or re revolving around a point. So let's see. This circular sketch pattern. Now the, the original sketch from the previous screen, it's um, 11 items. I have a feeling I won't be able to do 11 because it's all, you know, they'll overlap. But let me try something here. If not, I'll have to undo. Can I take this? Oh, no. Can I take this? Can I change this to, let's say, um, 50? Well, it did something I wasn't expecting, so no. Let's... Um, Let's not, let's not do that, control Z. So let's control Z again. That's, um, I like using offsets. So say 25, it's there. Uh, let's make a smaller um, 15. 15 probably will work, so let's do that. All I want to do is have this as a guide. Oh, a print just finished. Hey, how many hours? Nine hours. Delete this. And uh, so let's see, just had a, a private message and just responded to. I'm going to continue right here. So let's see, um, what I want to do here is kind of trim these things. So let's just do this. Let's go here, here. Let's take a sketch and from the center, let's just go right there. Let's, uh, extend this line all the way let's trim it and i will trim these other lines i'm going to just copy this one line and mirror this on this construction line so now it appears there now i'm going to go ahead and just trim the remainder and now that it says there's an error involved so I'm just going to tell the thing to basically to ignore the error by deleting delete all so somewhere inside that list there was something that caused an error and uh, so I, I don't care about it right now it's um, it's most likely that errors was stemming from the offset of these lines from here because once i did that mirror then you know the error came up so it's nothing important i'm just using those lines as a guide anyway so okay let's go to the circular sketch pattern and oh 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 oh, oh. Wrong, wrong, wrong. Okay. I don't know what I was doing. Okay.
Take this, take that. Let's go to circular sketch pattern. Strange. Anyway, let's just see what happens. Oh, maybe, okay, never mind. So 11. Okay, uh, and let's do let's extend this all the way to this little ring. I can do up to the surface, which will take it all the way to here. But I, what I think might look better is if I do offset from surface, and I can tell the distance, how close I want to get it to. In this case, let's just say five. I don't know what's a good number for this one, so let's just do five. Now let's go a little bit tighter down. I'm thinking about it. Let's try, what do you think, two? Let's try that. Two millimeters away from that, that surface there. Um, Would that be good? Would that, is that good enough? I can always go back and change it. Maybe it should meet. Maybe it should go all the way to the surface. Let's take a look and see how it looks on the whole thing, the whole structure. Well, what if I had this tapered towards the front? You know, like like it meet, meets all the way to the surface. And so let's just move this a little bit. Uh, right about there. So what if it went all the way to the surface, but I had the thing kind of sloping a little bit till it gets almost. You see, but the thing is, is that when I 3D print this, okay, using a regular filament printer, if it has a small slope, it's going to look nice on the screen, things like that. But in reality, because of the of the nature of the printer, it's going to have a long step pattern of layer after layer after layer going all the way to the, the very tip. It's not going to look good. It might look good in the sense that it, it'll look like uh, the structure was, you know, manufactured, that kind of thing. Um, and it could pass like that, you know, like real world manufacturing type things or something. Um, but I'm thinking, I'm thinking maybe I maybe it should be well. The more steep the the slope is, the better for the print. So if I do a. a uh, if I begin, let's say here in this area, and I begin the slope, I'll still have that step pattern, but it might look okay. Maybe actually it should be way up, way up here. I should do a. I should do that that uh, that tapered. So, okay, what I'll do is I'll extend this all the way to that to that ring and then I'll go back and I'll just kind of taper it out to the edge. Uh, let's see. Okay. So um switch the, to the previous. Go back to features. Offset from surface, say up to surface. So into there. Okay. Uh, now I'm going to go ahead and save. Okay, uh, I'm going to go to features and choose chamfer. This would be the easiest way to do this. If I want to go back in later and change, it'll be easy to change. Let's say, for example, two millimeters. 
um, one, let's just say 1.5. Let's see how that looks. And let's do the, uh, well, let's say let's do what three. What if I do it like that? Not quite what I was thinking. So let's cancel this. Let's uh, let's do the old-fashioned way, and do um, a revolve cut. So let's go to white plane. Okay, that's the back of it. This is the front. Uh, so sketch. So let's say, uh, see, this is where it gets a little bit on the tricky side. It's about two millimeters. So let's say two. Something like this. Let's just say 10, a nice round number. There. Now, gotta choose where it's gonna rotate around. So I'm just gonna say here 180 degrees. Okay. And rotate around this. Features revolve cut. So it'll be. Uh, yeah, you see how it's going to kind of miss that. So I gotta make this a little bit taller. I thought because the surface was. Uh, curved, it, it will just uh, just miss it, but nope, I gotta include it. There. Construction line. Actually, let's just go ahead and delete it. Okay. Then we'll say features, revolve cut. It automatically picked out that line. And okay, so let's just see how it looks. Oh. Still not quite what I was thinking of, but oh well. So anyway, um, just to play around with it a little bit more. If I were to make this curved features, I, can't I don't think I think ten might be too much. Five. Yeah, let's let's just say five for now. So five. Well, this will the program automatically select. Okay, good. Oh, uh, oh, look at that. Let's just see how it looks. This. Save. I wasn't expecting to see this like that. Could that be interesting? Well, let's see what other options it, it would give me.
Mm. Easier way is to just delete and do it again. So the lap five millimeters. Select it there, select it that. Well, I could do it manually, you know, but let's just see. Let's just see how this works, you know. Kind of feeling a little bit on the lazy side. If I do this manually, I'll have to go one, two, one, two, one, two. You know, do that for each one all around. So let's let's just see how this looks. Okay, save that. And let's uh take this. I don't know. What do you all think? It might work. It might look a little bit too long. Maybe, maybe this needs to, to kind of taper out some, come like right about there, right there. So that way, this side also goes up right about there. Maybe, or maybe I should just do manually those those curves all around. And leave this straight so it just comes up right to here. Anyway, so I think I'm done for the moment. So now try something new. Let's see how would I do for laser cutting. What I want to do is. Um, Specifically, what I want to do is, see, I, I need to, something that about this design is that um, I'm not quite happy with part of it, but I'll tell you, okay, so let's say, for example, this, uh, this thruster is in the, the VSS, okay? So top view, I and you know so I have a wall on the VSS on this side. I have another thruster since it has two on this side. Then I have another wall. If I ever want to change the light bulb, none of this these op um, this box here doesn't open. You know once I glue everything together, it's going to say sealed, and I can't just take it from the front. My hand will fit into here. But the thing is, is that you see how these things are, they, they lock with these long tabs into the sides. And the one in the back locks to the tab in, in the top and bottom. I could move this, uh, this uh, one so it locks into this slot here. I can do that. The thing is, is the thing is, is that um, if I ever want to change the light bulb to something else, there's no easy way. One one way for me to do it is um, let's hide this top. I can depress it. So one easy way is to make it so I can just simply remove the top
Hmm. And if this one is rotated towards the top, can I simply do that right now? What I need to do is identify which of these items here is it is it uh, connected? Maybe no. So is it this? No, that's the light bulb part. You see, one of these sides are mated to the other structure. Okay, there it is. Oh, come on. No, that's it. So, that one there. So, let's delete that. If I can, I move this as is. Yeah. Oh. Look at that, it's moved the whole thing. And uh, it's probably because I suppressed that top item. So let's just put it back. Okay, so it was important. <laughs> okay, so I can move this one to here and you know, lock it into place there. That would work. So. Let's just save this. Rebuild and save, yes. So this is what I think I'll, I'm going to do. But for for the moment, what I will do is um, let's take away that top part again to take a look at the insides. So um, if we eat this, okay, to make this easier to see. Can we just make this into change the material? Let's say let's make it into uh, carbon steel. Okay, and this one also into carbon steel. Right there. So, um, okay, so let me go ahead and save this. So, what I will do is later, what I'll do is I'll make something that will help guide and keep in place these items basically little structure that i would just simply glue into place as is uh, so with this with if i could make the top removable and i'm thinking of of maybe 3d printing a little holder and have like a magnet at uh, some of the corners so instead of modeling another little structure for that i'm thinking of just simply um 3d printing a little piece and just keep it here with um with a magnet so the idea is i would be able to simply remove the top and then slide out the light bulb change it put it back and then slide it back in put the cover back so let's do that i go, am going to return this uh item here unsuppress it save and uh Okay, so I'm going to get those two items. Well, I, I did that earlier. I'm going to go ahead and do the box, this box area here, all around.
So I need two left and rights, two top and bottom. I'm not going to do this yet. And I'm not going to do this one yet. Actually, yes, I will do this one. But I'm not going to do this one yet. Not until I get a little bit more satisfied with how the thruster part is going to be. And so once I get closer to that, then I'll see. Actually, I'm thinking, hmm. No, I think I could do this one now. Because it's the way the thruster parts attach. Yeah, that is simple and plain. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to have to do the entire box. So let's get started with that. So what I'm going to do now is simply convert this box into a format that I can take to the laser cutter. So what is this one called? Main thruster mount. So let's go down first. File open. Is it 1A? Yeah, 1A. So open that one. Do I have the thrusters? Uh, main thruster. Let me let me close this. Main thruster extend. Close that. Okay, so that one's there. Uh, what's the next one? Main thruster box 1A and 1B. 1B is the rear of it. Okay. So, file, open. Main thruster, main thruster. I'm just looking at the pictures. Main thruster 1B. So this is a main thruster mount. The main thruster box. So file open. Pictures. Main thruster box 1A. No, I guess there's only two. So open. And file open. Main thruster box 2A. Okay, I'm going to uh, open, uh, make a, actually, engine, okay. I am going to make a, a folder. Game cluster. Okay, so this is the way to do it. Let's see. Let's go to let's let's close the assembly on this. Let's go to um, window main thruster mount. Let's do this one first. So the easiest way laser cutters. They, the nature of the machine, they subtract material for cutting or engraving. So it's not like a 3D printer that adds material. This one's going to be removing material. And this is a standard laser cutter. It only has um, X and Y access. And uh, so it's not like a, some something that has... Uh, you know, a whole bunch of accesses for turning and doing things. So 
In other words, I'm just going to be cutting it along the X and along the Y. So if I want to build up an object, I would have to do multiple cuts and then glue them together so they build up. Fortunately, these designs are not um, too fancy in the sense that anything that I do, I'll be using other means like uh, 3D printers to print an item and then apply it to the laser cut part. But so what I'm going to do here is just simply convert into an Adobe Illustrator uh, format then take that format into another program, convert it and lay it out for the laser cutter. And then I'll take it to the laser cutter software. So the easy way to do is in SolidWorks is to take your 3D part and say, make drawing from part. Then it wants to, you know, like, like as if I'm working for an engineering company, it's going to want to have like, you know, paper sizes, and it's going to have like, you know, header type information for you to, so you can sign the, you know, document stuff. So I'm just say cancel because I don't want any of that. Now I see down here is this is the ratio. I'm just going to say one to one. Then I'm going to select it. What's nice with SolidWorks is you can make uh, nice illustrations with this. You can say, for example, this one right here in the middle. And if you ever wanted to, you can you can add other other items, other views. But I'm not going to do any of that. Yeah, yeah. I don't want I don't want to do any of that. Yeah. Stop. Okay, good. So then I, um, so as is, all I have to do now is just go save as. And since I don't want to keep this for later, I'll just say no. I don't want to update anything. I don't want to do anything like that. So Adobe Illustrator, go to main thruster box, and I choose Illustrator's format. I say save. It does its thing. I close it. I don't want to save. And I just close this one. Now this one here, same thing. Main thruster box 2A make drawing from part then I say cancel so this ratio one to five go to one to one Bring this one drop it into place I select this File, save as. No, do not update view before save. There'll be Illustrator and main thruster box. AI, save. Close this. Don't save. Close this. Is this the? No, this is not the last one. There's two more. File, make drawing from part. This is one A. Cancel. I gotta look behind my microphone. The microphone's in the way. One to one. Top. No, I gotta drag it. Select OK, File, Save As, No, do not update. Adobe Illustrator, main thruster box, format AI, and then they got one more to do after this.
close. Don't save. Close. And this one. Make drawing from part. Cancel. It doesn't matter front or back is the same. Okay, we're gonna go okay. And um, file, save as. No Google update. So this feature that SolidWorks has, it's useful for making, um, you know, uh, blue line, uh, blueprints, things like that. Instructions, basically. Save. You know, instead of having to go back and manually make a, a line drawing, it does it automatically. Don't save. So I'm going to close this. And now I'm going to close SolidWorks. OK. Now what I'll do is um, bring up another window. Uh, Affinity Designer is my uh, program of choice for this. Now I will um, tell this program to share the screen for application window, Affinity Designer Share. Okay, I'll go hide. So what I'll do here is, um, let me go to the folder window. And I'm just wondering, can I simply just drag and drop? Main thruster mount, 1A. So let's try this. Drag and drop. OK. Takes PDF options. I don't know why. Uh, I don't know. So I'm just going to go OK, just as is. So then I'm going to go File, New, Beambox, which is the my laser cutter of of preference so i've got to change the document setup the dpi to do really really accurate i have very low dpi on this other people they have different settings for their dpi uh dots per square inch well dots per inch and um, but for me, the numbers on my machine work perfectly at this. So you know, it's like very low dots per inch, but it works for me in terms of the accuracy. So what I'll do here is select these, little copy, go to my one that I just did, paste it. Just kind of center it somewhere. Okay, just get rid of this. Uh, now what I need to do is open up Notepad. Because what I need to do here, let me go ahead and just document this. This program is, I mean, this file is main cluster mount 1A. I need is the width and the height because I need to verify that imported into the laser it's going to be precise. 200 millimeters by 200 millimeters. Okay. So then I will go file, save as. Hmm. 
Oh, okay. Affinity Designer. Let's go to actually new new folder. Uh, what did I call it? The other one. I just call it thruster. Thruster box. I just call it thruster box. Select. Go. Um. Save. Oh, <laughs> I've forgotten to file save as. I don't want to call it undefined or untitled. I'll just one um, main thruster mount 1A. Then what I do now is um, is um, I'm just thinking file export SVG that's the file format that the laser cutters nowadays like selection without background export yeah maybe make it a little bit easier to see what I got and then save Then let me do this again. Say no. Oh, save yes. And here. So I'll, what I would have to do is do it again. But oh, 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 I forgot something. Bring it back up. Something very important. Go to stroke. It says zero point seven points. And I make this one 0 0.2. Because if the line is thick enough, the laser will try to engrave instead of cut. And engraving is not what we want. So let's go back and say export SVG whole document. Nope. Selection without background. Yes. Main thruster mount, okay, and say yes, overwrite. Let's just do this one more time and then I'll do the, the laser. So file, uh, well, we go, let's just do drag and drop again. So that was main thruster mount 1A. Mm, I mean, main thruster box. Main thruster mount 1B. Oh, okay, this one. So, well, I want to take it from here. This and that. Copy. Then file new. I got presetting for Glowforge or Beanbox. I'm going to say Beanbox. Come back to alter my dust per inch, 20.405. Paste. And I'm going to choose, um, block this all in, 0 0.2. Line width and get rid of that plus. Delete. Then go file, save as. I'm going to call this one main thruster mount 1B. Okay. Let's select it. File, export. SVG, selection without background, export. And it's got the name, so I'll say save. Now I will close this program. Yes. So yeah, there's there's two more um, files to do, but I think you, you'll, you'll get the idea. And uh, 
So what I'll do now is um, bring up the Beam Studio. It's the software for the laser cutter. It will, uh, it's designed mostly for layout. It's got other features, but I am not going to be using those other features for um, it's you know features like editing. You know, if, if I'm going to edit something, I'm going to be using a more much more powerful program. So let me bring that. Let me share the screen. Share screen. Application window. Beam Studio. Share. So um, well, this is kind of difficult for me to see. Let me move the browser out the way. Let me. Uh, okay, so that's a little bit better. So um, what I'll do here is maybe get to the proper folder. Uh, where did it go? Uh, let me see. Let me uh, bring up Affinity Designer again. Find out where I saved it. So we go new inbox. If I just throw something in there, a square, a little file, save as. What's the path? Engine 2 fitting design the thruster box. Copy. Okay, I'll close the program and get back to it. Yes. Say no. It's the path. There it is. Okay, so. Um, okay, so let's just take the first one, main thruster mount, 1A. I choose the cutter. This this is, um, each cutter is, um, you can have a different setting. So remember, I saved the, the height and width was 200 millimeters. So I need to just change this to 200 and 200. Okay. Let me turn on the laser cutter. It's off right now. Okay, I'm back. I had to put some some wood in there as well. And uh, so, okay, so what we can do here is um, kind of move this out the way. And let's see, connecting beam box one. So the first thing you got to do with one of these types of laser cutters is to 
take a picture of the work area. So the main the main purpose for these types of programs is to lay out your design. It's really not designed for editing your design. So if you want to do um, you know some serious work with a laser cutter, you don't want to use like you know the built-in tools for you know text lines, and, uh, squares, things like that. I mean that's fine if if you got sim a simple thing, you know, like you know you you want to do a simple little design for whatever, and yeah, th those tools will work fine for that. But if you want to do something much more complicated and more detailed, you want to use a better program. So the only thing that I use in this um, software a lot, besides the camera, is um, this array where I can I can duplicate multiple items real fast. This this is a very good feature right there. So um, everything almost everything else on top I never use. So you know. so this is mostly for layout. And so what it's doing is that on the laser uh, the laser head itself it's got a little camera. So it just snakes around and takes a snapshot the entire thing. Uh, a laser cutter like the Glowforge has a, a camera under the lid, which will take the picture of everything all at once. Boom. And so it's faster to take a picture with the Glowforge. But the thing is, is that, you know, it's you got like that much separation between the lid and whatever it is you're cutting. So the you know, camera has to take a picture like this and cover the entire area. So, you know, it's, it's got a, a fish eye lens. So then, you know, they use uh, some, I forget what it's called, some, some math that will uh, kind of take the fish eye lens and flatten everything. So the thing is, is that with the Glowforge directly underneath the, the camera is the most accurate. The further out you go to the sides, it becomes less accurate. So, you know, you have material to end here, but on your screen, it looks like your material is here when it's actually here, things like that. So other makers, they do a different approach. Flux does it where the camera is directly on top of the laser itself. It just takes more time to, to do the entire cutting area. Um, but it's 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 you know it's, it's it's fine. It's a little bit more accurate because you can get you know specifically you know very accurate uh, positions anywhere on the cutting area. It's, it doesn't just estimate. It's it's accurate everywhere. So anyways, this is going to take up almost the entire wood. So I'm just going to go right here. Maybe I have enough space later on to put something else, something smaller, and I can reuse this wood. So the next thing to do is um, set the power. For me, I'm just going to choose 25%. Speed, I'm just going to choose... Uh, that's a good speed for this. Something simple. Let's just say 12. And I'm going to execute it, let's say, four times. So in other words, it's going to go along the entire design about four times. And so now I'm going to go ahead and select which machine. I have other machines, but they're not on. So... It'll take seven minutes, 55 seconds. So I will start it now. Okay, I can hear the machine go on. Now, unfortunately, I can't really just bring the camera over there. And I'm not using a, a, a cell phone. But what I will try to do is that I have an old phone. And I'm going to try to connect to... 
uh, to this um, this video. And I'm going to try to see that if I could connect here, maybe I could just walk over to the laser cutter and and see if I can connect. Copy. Um. I also need to see about instructions for guests. Now, how can I get this to me? I don't have this. Is an old phone is only connected to my network. So the thing is, how do I send it to myself? How do I turn it on? It's been a while. Uh, oh, I got line on here. Uh, how uh, I don't have Facebook. Yeah, I don't have Facebook. I wish I wish it would have given me a QR code instead. Yeah. Maybe what I'll do is just open up the browser, type in manually. H. Okay, well, I hope I don't have any, any uh, typos. So I don't have a cellular network for this phone, so everything's going through my my network here. Um, The screen just went all white. I don't know why. So, maybe old browser. Copy. Watch by the time I get done seven minutes will be finished so okay. come on how do I oh, paste Face. Face. Uh, gotta do it all over, over again. What did I do? I don't know what it did. So let me do it again. HTTP. Yes. And slash slash.
okay, I got something. So if you're using a cell phone to, to connect to this thing, um, you need to have a good, um, an updated browser. Okay, so here's me. Maybe I go mute. Okay. Um, DW2. Okay. Uh, go. I'm backstage. Okay. Uh, hmm. So here I go, add to stream. Hey everyone, this is me on the cell phone. So let me uh, switch. Solo layout. This is gonna be interesting because I am going to go to the, um, to the laser cutter. Okay, don't know if you all can see this really well. I can't see what um what I'm doing because I don't want to switch the camera. Oh, it finished. <laughs> oh, that was fast. So, okay, that was a simple test. I am going to run uh, the burn one more time. And because it didn't quite go all the way through, so I just need to execute it to say two more times. And, uh, so I'll go export. Start. One thing that uh, now that it has done a cut is I could put on the, the camera. Remember the the camera's off the side of the laser thing. So the laser thing is more towards the towards the right side of that image, like right about here, right about here, actually. Something like that. And you know, so I guess it's up here actually. So um yeah. So I guess it's right here. Now I wonder how, let me, well, that does that thing. Let me, uh, 
let me see can i change the the direction of the camera this is interesting here maybe i can change the direction Uh, what's this? Could I? This is refresh. Huh? Yeah, let's refresh. Hmm. I guess I can't um, have the phone camera switch to the front camera. Well, okay, so I'm going to go ahead and leave this uh, studio thing here. Okay. Good. Yeah, the phone got hot. So, okay. What a size difference, huh, with the phones? Yeah. So, my, this old phone versus the phone that I use now. Wow. <laughs> So, Getting a little sleepy. Yay, it looks like you're finished. So let me go get that part and I'll be right back. Still say it's like 99% working, that kind of thing. Uh, completed now. So let me go get it.
Okay, well, I just put in some more wood. The wood I have in there right now is really bad. So it's not something I can sell to anybody. So let's go ahead and do another um, camera thing. Well, if this does that, maybe I can go ahead and save. Yeah, I mean, first amount, save. So what I'll do is I'll keep the same settings. I don't, I have to be careful how I'm going to save this next one. And let me get the file. This is main thrust amount 1B. Color. Ouch, look at that. Why is it so small? That's not good. Yeah, what happened? Why is it so small? That's not good. Let me uh let me bring up that program again. Affinity Designer. File, open recent, main thruster mount 1B. Huh? Why is it so small? 100? Hmm. Yeah, when, when this thing came in, why did it come in so small? I'm pretty sure I saved it as 1 to 1 ratio. Let's close this. Let's bring it back. Color. Okay, let's... Let's... Uh, it's going to be 200. All right, 200. Okay. This is really bad wood, so I'm just going to do right smack in the middle. I mean, it's it's really bad. Actually, is is better at this corner here, so I'm just gonna come down to there, and I'll say, okay, go ahead and um, do this one. Or how many times? Because this is really bad. So let's just say do it six times. So beam box go. Yeah, what I mean by oh, 26 minutes. Oh gosh, what I mean by um bad wood is that it's it's warped uh, I mean it's it's seriously warped so it's doing its thing right now but I'm 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 just gonna let it go without camera or anything like that um, so that's about it really Hmm. Mostly because if I look at the camera thing right now, it's going to show me a lot of blank. Cameras not even coming in. Which is odd, I wonder why. I don't think anything stopped. Ah, it's going.
So 24 minutes, 55 seconds left. Uh, so maybe I should just, you know, end the video now because it's just going to cut back. Oh, but I forgot to show the previous cut. Okay, so let me change this. So this is how it came out. This is not the warped piece. The, the warped piece that's, that's working right now, I mean, it's really warped. I mean, it's like, like that, you know. This print has finished, so and this other print has finished. So let me start the log one here. So, as in an error, I printed this piece with uh, what's called a, 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 a skirt. So, it's kind of like, it's a method to help keep items on the bill plate. But I didn't want that. By accident, I started to print it like that. So, but this is... Um, one of the parts for the um, this is one of the parts for the VSS. So this is actually going to be the bottom part. It's going to have another piece here, a piece in the middle, and then the other side. And the wood is going to the floor is going to be wood. It's going to be on it like this. 
so I'm going to have to have several done. And you know, so, so six, so I'm going to have to have 12 per floor. If you can hear that, that's, that's the tropical storm that we're having. Uh, I'm kind of, kind of concerned about the, the opening I have because the wind is coming this direction, blowing the rain, and I have the vent hose for the laser cutter going out through the windows on that side. So I have like six inches of open space. I'm just going to to see. How, if there's any water coming in. Hmm. I got. Wow, the wind is pulling the window as well. Uh, got 26 minutes. Well, I'm going to go ahead and end this video. And since I have still about 18 minutes left, 17 minutes left before the um the laser cut is done. So I'll just go ahead and let it, let it run, and uh, but I'll do that, you know, while not going live. And uh, since I don't really have anything else going on, so. Yeah. But I'll I'll show how the results come out um, after. I'm not quite sure what to expect because it is a seriously warped piece of wood and uh, not suitable for setting to anybody. But since this is a personal project, yeah, what does it matter? Huh? So, um, so anyways, uh, I'll get that done. And when it's finished, I'll, you know, take a snapshot photo, that kind of thing. And, uh, oh. Maybe I'll grab a bite to eat, too, or something like that. Something to snack on. It's nice and cool out there. One, one thing I do need to do is I need to um, laser cut some frames for, for to function as spool holders. So I got these uh, Rubbermaid um, tubs, buckets, whatever containers and um, some of the specialty filaments that I use well actually all of them really but some of them accept, uh, absorb moisture in the air more easily than typical filament so to guard against that I'm 
putting them into sealed containers with silica gel at the bottom. And uh, the method does work. It's just that instead of having the, uh, the spools just moving around freely on the inside, you want to do something to help keep the spools um, rotating as freely as possible. You know, so because you know, little by little, especially as the filament goes into a tube like this, you know, there's a lot of friction. And even though these might be like Teflon tubes or something, they do have friction. You know, and that and that friction does build up quite a bit. So I'll go ahead and start another CAD drawing. And in the methods that you saw me do today uh, for the VSS, I'll be doing the same thing, the same type of method, going from solid SolidWorks to Affinity Designer and uh, then from there into the laser cutter to do these um, these stands, spool stands. And I got to do two of them. So, because I got two more uh, filament spools, I don't want to, to risk. Well, okay, I'll talk with you all later. And uh, thank you for sticking with me on this video for as long as you've had, as long as you have. And um, stop screen. And um, <laughs> no. All right, catch y'all later. Uh, what? No comments? Oh, hmm. brand. I guess I put brand back. All right. Catch y'all later. Thanks. Bye-bye.